where was your Jesus when young kids were in institutions and raped and sexually abused? Hello to all my skeptic and believer friends. Today we will be reviewing and commenting on this video of a street preacher and a woman having a very raw and honest conversation on the topic of human suffering. This is one of the most serious objections to our faith as Christians. And it is the one that I would say distances the most people from God more than anything else. Pastor Daniel does a good job of being sensitive to this woman's pain and trauma while still clearly presenting the gospel to her. So, without further delay, let's get into it. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't, don't touch me, number one. Thou, and number two, I, 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 what, what, what can I do for you? Thou shalt not judge. Is that a biblical verse? See, I didn't walk away. Okay, why did you judge me then? Why did you come here and tell me what to do? That means you're judging me. So, can I, can I help you, ma'am? Yeah, why did you say to that woman, don't judge you, or, or um, don't come near me? Well, I didn't say don't come near me. Actually, I was inviting her to a conversation. No, you said I heard you over there. I heard you over there. And what type of religion are you saying? Well, I'm only preaching about a person that you know as Jesus. Uh, do you believe in Jesus, who um, died, was buried, and rose again on the cross? Can I say something to you? Now, can I say out straight to you now? Yes, you can. And I'm saying my opinion to you. Where was your Jesus when young kids were in institutions and raped and sexually abused and beaten in them institutions? I'm a survivor. My mother is a survivor. My brother is a survivor. My other brother was beaten to death. So you tell me where your Jesus was. Come on, just hey, tell me. Sure, sure, sure. Bad thing. Now, I would just like to take a minute and applaud this woman for her courage to stand there in public and voice her hurt and trauma. Her pain and suffering is real, and you can tell in her voice that her offense towards Jesus is justified in her mind. After all, how could an all-loving, all-knowing, and all-powerful God allow innocent children to suffer in institutions? being raped and beaten day after day. To many skeptics and unbelievers, this is a real problem with the Christian faith because it presents a clear contradiction. Why would a God that claims to love his creation and claims to be in sovereign control over everything allow a child to face such atrocities? Is he not powerful or as in control as he claims to be? Or is he just indifferent to the sufferings of his creation? Let's see how Pastor Dan answers these allegations against Jesus. Things have happened to me and so many people that I know. And you yeah. want to know where Jesus was? You tell me. I'm trying to tell you. I'll, I'll try to tell you. What happened to you doesn't come from God. It comes from the devil. And what happens is your family, your family, and your community has opened the doors to sinful and demonic practices, which has caused your city to be infiltrated so by wicked people and that is a choice that god has given all men and all women to make do you want your families to suffer because of your decisions now if you make a decision to waste your money on alcohol and on gambling you're going to make your kids suffer is it the child's fault for your decisions? No, I but your no child. Children. No, so this is. I, I no, know I'm not talking no, no, about no, your children. But listen to me first. No, I'm finishing this conversation. You're finishing, okay? No. So you don't want a conversation. No, I do. Want I'm answering your question no, you're not as to where sin ha comes from I and why no you children. went through what you went through. I the reason why you went through what you went through is because of the human heart and the sinful actions of people, your parents, your community, that has opened the door and it's affected everybody else. It's sad. So this is why, so you want to know where Jesus was. No, no, you want to know where Jesus was. Jesus was on the cross dying for sins. And before that, he was calling people to repent of their sins. But your family, your ancestors have decided to not repent of their sins and it's affected you, which it shouldn't have happened. And I'm grieved for what you went through. God is grieved for what you went through. And all those who harmed you and did that will have their day before God. And if they don't repent, they will be sent to hell. They will face the wrath of God for what they did to you. God is going to bring justice to every man. So in the meantime, don't let your past become your burden forever. Let my, go. No, no, listen to me. My past is not 
bothering me now. Okay, I'm just good. saying to you. So I'm telling you where Jesus was. No, I'm Jesus just was there. You, no, you're not listening to me. My past is not bothering me anymore. I've, I'm doing what I want to do now. And I have an 89 year old mother, and she's still living now. And I'm minding her, and her past isn't bothering her anymore, and it hasn't bothered her, my brother anymore. We got help for that, and we're doing what we want, and we're happy now. And I will not take this. I'm do. I have no religion in the world. I am happy the way I am. I know there is a God. Don't get me wrong. I do know there is a God. So don't get me wrong. I know that well. But I just hate this preaching. And I just. It's just that. Abuse is abuse. Like I you know. Agree. I agree. You understand where I am coming from? Absolutely, and this is. Please hear me out for one second. I will now, okay, but, hear me but I, I, I just wanted to finish my conversation because I don't like being interrupted when I'm saying a conversation. I understand. I understand. Now you can talk. Yeah. So. Okay, that was a lot to hear, and my heart goes out to this woman and for what she went through. I mean, her entire family was victimized by an institution that, in the name of God, was supposed to be caring for her and protecting her, but instead abused her. It's no wonder she says she has no religion, and I think many of us would probably have made the same choice as her to turn our back on God. Now, although Pastor David makes some unsubstantiated assumptions about how she came to find herself in those terrible circumstances, I think he does a great job on shining the light on sin as being the problem, as opposed to the absence of Jesus in the midst of her pain. His point is simply this. In the world that God created, he gave humans the option to choose right from wrong. We see this pattern very clearly in the Bible, starting with the depiction of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is symbolic of the free will that God has granted to us as his creation. Now, why does God give us the option to choose? Well, I believe the answer clearly is this, that love can only be true and genuine if it is given and received freely. If a man physically and emotionally abuses his wife and threatens to kill her if she ever leaves him, would it be considered true love? Of course not. This man should likely be arrested and thrown into jail. Now, when it comes to our personal pain and suffering, we cannot blame God for other people's sinful choices. This woman went through something horrible as a child. But God cannot be blamed or accused of being indifferent because, number one, he cannot stop or prevent people from sinning. He can try to intervene, but at the end of the day, it is our choice to commit evil or not. And second, if anyone understands pain, it is Jesus. He is the one that gave up his throne in heaven to come down and be brutally tortured and murdered on a cross as a testament of his love for us. So, so I, I think what's happened now is exactly what the devil, the enemy, wanted. He used, listen, I'm not saying your mother or dad is, is bad people. They're not. I don't know them, right? But when our parents make decisions to go to places like, say, the Roman Catholic Church, and there's preachers saying, hey, don't worship, I don't put idols in your home. Don't uh, pray to things that ought not to. And they resist preachers. They say, you know what? You preachers are crazy. They don't read the Bible. They bring their churches into, they bring their kids into a place where there's idolatry. The very thing that God said not to do, they bring their kids there. Their kids get affected by the very things that God said not to do. And then you suffer, and then now you have to ask, why did this happen? We have to trace it back to where the root began. I'm not saying your parents intended that. Nobody, my parents I'm not saying put that. Me into an institution. No, no, my but, parents were both in institutions. I only found my parents about 20 years ago. One is dead, my father is dead now. Jesus Christ. Okay, so, so did you have parents? Nothing. Did you did who, who I raised only you? Found the nuns raised me. Okay. So, so Okay, so I don't know Okay, okay. So I don't know the exact history of how you got into the church or why, but I do know that the decisions we make, whether your parents' decisions, whether their parents brought people into situations you shouldn't have been raised by your nun the nuns you should have been raised by your parents but how did your parents get into a situation to have children that they couldn't handle i don't know where what was going on 
with them, and I don't know what was going on with their parents. But I can tell you the root of every bad decision, and it's sin. When we go against God, we make decisions that have repercussions on everybody else. So what I'm saying is, all the world faced death because of one man's decision, Adam and his wife. They decided to rebel against God, and we face the consequences of everything they've done. We are not in the Garden of Eden anymore because of one man's decision. But because of one man's decision, Jesus Christ, we can now be delivered from our sin, set free from our bondage, and we can be brought back into God's kingdom. So it's not the preacher that you should hate. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I'm not a Roman Catholic priest. I don't follow... I, I know. I don't follow Roman Catholicism. But what I am saying is that Jesus is against the abuse that you went through. Jesus Christ never said for anybody to be abused. If, in fact, he's against hypocrites. He's against abuse. And he, he's going to judge every liar, every abominable worker, every wicked man, every sexual immoral person will find themselves in the lake of fire, whether they're priest, whether they're pastor, whether they're an individual. Every person living in unrighteousness will not inherit the kingdom of God. Justice is coming. But in the meantime, you have to look at yourself. Okay, so I believe this is a good place to give some final concluding thoughts. Before I get into it, I would like to state that if you are a Catholic listening to this, I hope you are not offended by what Pastor Daniel has said. Every church and every denomination has people in it that do not represent God well, and subsequently give the rest of the members of that church a bad name. The actions of the nuns and the priests depicted in this clip does not speak to the morals of everyone affiliated with the Catholic Church. Now, the final point Pastor Daniel makes is crucial for us to understand. As Christians, we believe in the concept of what the Bible calls a final judgment. The idea is that everyone, regardless of their skin color, social status, religious title, or what have you, will stand before God one day and have to answer for everything they did and said. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 36 and 37, Jesus says it like this, But I tell you that men will have to give account on the day of judgment for every careless word that they have spoken. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Now, whether the doctrine of hell is moral or not is a completely different video altogether. But the idea of justice is something that should bring consolation to those who have been through abuse and suffering in their lives. If you've ever watched any Netflix true crime documentary, you will see that the victim's family will always seek the maximum sentence possible for the perpetrator in the crime against their loved one. This is normal, of course, as we were all created in the image of God, and if He demands justice, then we should also. We need to understand that a good and just God would never allow sin to go unpunished. So rest assured that whoever hurt you and whoever has hurt this woman will have his day before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I will have a link to the complete video in the description below. I highly recommend that you watch it until the end as it explains more on the topics we briefly covered here in this video. Let us know if you have any questions, comments, objections, or thoughts in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one.